Hi everybody, I hope everyone is well. I've had a number of questions come through on the completion of assignment one, the small database project that we were building in Microsoft Access. So uh, for those of you that haven't completed or submitted the assignment yet, um, I wanted to provide some information as to what's expected and what you need to get done. So where we wanna leave off inside the actual program is you wanna have a completed invoice module. It doesn't have to have a background picture like this. But essentially, you want to have your date of sale, your invoice number, employee ID, customer ID, uh, all your product information, quantity, retail, and total items. And also on the bottom, you want to make sure you have your, your subtotal, adding up all these items here in the uh, total uh, items column, your HST, and your total on the bottom, which is simply just your HST, your subtotal. And then there's a series, of a series of data that you have to enter in as invoices. I'm going to show you what that is on eLearn. So as I scroll through here, I have these different invoices now that I've entered into my system and saved. Okay, so for the invoice module itself, um, if you haven't completed that, you can find videos right inside um, eLearn on that. Under contents, there's a heading there called uh, Access How-To Videos. And I put everything in there if you haven't had a chance to review them all yet. And just on the invoice module alone, there's four videos that will take you step by step through the process to complete your video module. Okay. Once you have your video, uh, your, pardon me, your invoice module completed, make sure you've got the currency and the correct currency. And, you know, double check and make sure everything's calculating correctly, right? Like make sure the HST is actually 13% of your subtotal and that your grand total equals that HST and your subtotal combined. Once you have everything completely functional and working and the layout kind of straightened out, not too bad, you need to enter some data into your invoice module. And you can find that right in the tab where it says My ERP. And you will find a file in here, it's an Excel file. Right here, it's called Customer Invoices 2020. I'm gonna open that up. And let's download this for a moment so I can walk you through it. All right. Now, some of you um, in the labs in class um, had actually um, keyed in the method of payment field within your invoice module, which is great. If you didn't get that far, don't be concerned about it. Just, you know, don't pay any attention to uh, column G here. But what you're going to find on this spreadsheet is you're going to see data sort of clustered. Like, for example, here on rows two, three, and four, this would represent one single invoice. Okay, so we've got our customer, our employee, the item that you bought, the quantity, and the amount. Now, a couple of things uh, I want to point out. Uh, some of you may not have the same employee or customer necessarily in the databases that you're using. At this point, whatever, you know, look for, you know, the actual customer uh, and the employee. If you can't find, for example, the specific employee, please just feel free to use anybody that you've already got in your uh, fields and forms. Ideally was with this project, you were supposed to use your employee and customer forms to enter uh, new people, new customers and employees so that you could see how these tables are connected and how they would you know, just magically appear from your drop down menu within your invoice module. But we're gonna cut this and keep it simple as possible. So by all means, you know, go ahead and look for these people first. If you don't see them, whoever's available, just go ahead and use them. Just use whoever you find. Um, now, another thing is you may find that when you select some of these items within your invoice module, the price that comes up uh, on your system will differ from what's on the spreadsheet. Just please use whatever price comes up within your system as the uh, as your correct price. Again, this was gonna this was a little twist that was put into the project. Um, that we were going to look at how we were going to put controls in place on our system. Again, given everything that's going on, we're not going to we're not going to go there. So, again, whatever price happens to pop up on your uh, system, just use that. But please be mindful and put in the quantities correctly. So when you get down, for example, uh, this Hannah Smith, she bought this uh, FireWire. 
from Apple and she bought three. So make sure you get your quantities in. And again, all these items you'll see clustered. So for example, rows two to four is an invoice. Row six and seven is a separate invoice. Row nine to 12, that's an invoice. Okay, this will all be one invoice. So when you go into your module, as you're entering invoices, you'll, you would go down to the bottom here and you would just start to go through your records. Now, I've gone through quite a few. Okay, and so example, you can see here I'm at 38 of 41 records. So when I get, there's 41. So this would be, for example, the last invoice that I entered into my system. So when I wanna enter a new invoice, I would just select the right arrow and now I'm in a new field here. I could just tab down. We never wanna um, type anything, put any data here in this invoice ID. If you recall, when we set this up, that particular field was set to auto number so that access will automatically create its own invoice number. And then you'll just go in and you'll just put in your dates and all your information. And when you're finished, then you'll just go to the next one and keep moving through it. So I hope that helps you. Uh, again, if you didn't get the method of payment um, built into your module in the labs, don't worry about it. Uh, look for your customers' employees as you see them on the record here. If you don't find a specific person, just use whoever shows up on your list and, and we'll call it a day. And then save your work and then you can submit it into the Dropbox. I hope that, I hope that helps. And again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop a line and take care. Bye.